Hello folks, this is RogueBit Explore Hack Escape, released October 10th, 2018, developed and published by Bigosaur. A single bit of computer memory became sentient and decided to escape from digital into the real world, explore RAM, modify bytes, and hack machine code and CPU registers to set it free. What I'm hoping to get out of this, uh, one of the best educational or... Uh, so on this channel, if you go through my catalog here, you'll note that I tend to, uh, to like to just review, uh, games that are about cybersecurity or hacking, hacking simulators, hacking themed puzzle games, and so on. But if you look at my reviews, I very rarely judge whether or not a game is good, in my opinion, on whether or not it is fun. There have been plenty of games that I've played... Uh, that that are fun, you know, or, or some kind of fun one way or another. Um, but as an educator, what I'm really looking for uh, in the field of cybersecurity is a good teaching or learning tool. Um, I'm, I'm looking for essentially a way to gamify um, certain lessons or, or aspects, something that could support the learning process. Uh, I'm looking for realism, too. Right. Um, and one of the games that I reviewed on this game, uh, one of the first ones I did, as a matter of fact, was Squally, <clears throat> which billed itself as a hacking adventure. It was really a side-scrolling RPG with a Gwent-like card game in it, um, but it's still one of my favorite games that I've ever reviewed on this channel because uh, it teaches some very difficult concepts in really accessible ways, namely assembly and so on. Um, so while it might not be, you know, the games that I that are on my top five list, for example, they're not AAA titles all the time. Uh, some some of them are even lesser known, but they are games that do that really well. And with Rogue Bit, with the way that it's built, I'm not looking for necessarily a realistic hacking simulator. It sounds like it's more going to be along the lines of Squally, where it's going to be an adventure game with hacking themes that will hopefully teach some technical topics that's what i'm hoping to see here i can see that we can do custom levels i'm already pretty uh, pretty happy with that uh, i do i do like games that are extensible so that's good uh, that's something that i can take advantage of as an educator but it's also something that players can take advantage of to extend the life of a game and that's always good to see let's get started somewhere in computer memory Enhance, enhance, enhance. Ah, there we go. Now, it did say a single bit of code. A single bit of computer memory became sentient. Okay, I was going to say, this is a byte we're looking at. All right, good. That's a bit. So, a single bit is a one or a zero. A byte is eight bits. And then you have kilobytes, megabytes gigabytes, terabytes, and so on. Needs your help to escape. Well, I am happy to help a little bit. Holy moly. Okay, we are thrown right into the deep end here. Let's see what we got. Player location, system RAM page 42, player position 1214, hex OCOE. Binary matches player location, ASCII extended US Latin, and registers. Oh boy, this is looking promising. Use the arrow keys to zor into adjacent bytes. You cannot enter into bytes that have the seventh bit set to, uh, oh well, one, because that would zor yourself to zero. Yes, we don't want to do that. Okay, so uh, here, do I have a, oh, there is no mouse cursor either. I, I can't say that I'm. This is really reminding me of some old school utilities and, and the old text-based MUDs I used to play when I was a, uh, a kid. All right. Um, let's, let's make a move here. I'm just going to move back and forth a bit. Okay. Just checking to see. Well, I mean, yeah, player position is what it ought be. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me. So the player position, I'm moving left and right here. You can see player position 12, 14. It, it is the, I mean, that hex translation does, is correct. It is what it ought to be. 
So if it were um, player position 0, 0, it would be hex 0, 0, 0, 0. If it were uh, player position 15, 15, it would be OF, OF, uh, and so on. Okay. Just going down the hallway here. I'm keeping my eyes open for changes here. All right. So the limit here as far as where we would be able to go. Oh, yeah, and you see, notice the hexadecimal also correctly changes when I go from 15 to 16, from hex OF to 10. It does mean that there's a limit on the distance that we can possibly travel. Uh, a two-digit expression in hexadecimal. Oh, I... Oh! I just realized this is... So, uh, the, I just... No, I realized what, what's actually we're being represented here. I see. So you can see in binary the value of the walls is 01011111. And it's high, helpfully highlighted for us here in blue. You can see how it matches the uh, the ASCII representation. Uh, binary and ASCII are just different ways of encoding information. The same information can be encoded in this way. Um, yeah, I just wanted to see what would happen here if I tried to to go in because it did say that if I uh, if I go into a, a space that has the seventh bit set to one, I would zor myself to zero. <sighs> I don't know why this keeps happening. Let's continue playing. Um, but you notice, uh, I wanted to see what would happen if I go into the U there, which you can see is hex value 01010101. Um, but I can't actually go into it. It's like it's a solid wall, which is fine, but uh, does sort of inform me on what to expect with the warnings here. Seems to save me from myself. Not that I don't appreciate that. I could use a little bit of saving. Okay, so we go through here. Oh, boy. All right, numeral systems.txt. Hexadecimal, uh, binary. So, yes, uh, binary, decimal, hexadecimal are all different ways of also encoding that information. I mean, all data uh, at its lowest level is represented in binary. It's just that binary is not very human readable or easy to work with in a lot of cases. So, uh, converting from binary to decimal or hexadecimal allows us to more easily you know, see the representation of data. And then, of course, there are other useful ways of encoding data, like, for example, ASCII or, I mean, any other form of data that you can you can think of uh, that just represents that data in a way that is meaningful to us. So, uh, yeah, so what we see here with decimal, uh, with binary, of course, you can have the smallest value will be a null byte, so zero, 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 that's three, zero, 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 zero 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 that's all zeros that's one byte again a bit is a one or a zero eight bits makes a byte and that's a null byte there's no no data it's just a zero the largest that can be represented in uh, in binary is going to be a full byte so one that's all ones um, but uh, you can represent that in decimal uh, so the value a null byte would simply be zero and then you if you have a full byte all uh, ones then 255 so 256 bits is what can be represented there or uh, sorry 256 is one byte in decimal whereas with uh, hexadecimal as i mentioned before uh you're looking at the uh, hexadecimal come in what are known as byte pairs so four values so four bits is a character and then two of those characters in hexadecimal is what's known as a byte pair and so ff is the highest that you can represent there okay um okay and it's Check in the translation table there. That's that's correct. Oh, and yep, can't. 
To store data, computers use physical or electrical states. A switch is either on or off. The voltage is high or low, etc. There are two states. They represent a single binary digit, one or zero. A unit where these digits are stored is called a bit. For convenience, bits are grouped into bytes. There are eight bits in one byte, giving 256 possible combinations. That's 256, zero to 255. Um, from uh, all, yep, as I, said, well, as I just explained. Uh, null byte to full byte or zero to 255. When we translate that to decimal numbers, a single byte can store a single letter from the English alphabet, numeric digit, or punctuation. So this is an ASCII translation table. What we're seeing here in green in the middle, that's our ASCII translation. ASCII, as I said, is just another way of encoding information in a way that is meaningful to us. So yes, we can take binary, and that represents a character in ASCII. We can convert that binary to decimal and use that to represent the character in binary. We can also convert it to hexadecimal and use that to represent the characters. It's not... Um, we don't need to do a translation from des from sorry binary to decimal to ASCII. We can go directly from one to the other. This is all just ways of representing the exact same information, the exact same thing. Um, and yes, the one or zero um, is uh, is itself a, a an abstraction. It is a representation of what. Uh, at a lower physical level is occurring. Um, so yeah, it, a one or a zero, I mean, you know, the old binary joke of like, well, you know, um, one zero, and then you throw a two in there and the computer doesn't know what to do. It's cause it does. I mean, <laughs> not that I'm a wet blanket or, you know, super fun at parties or anything. And I'm all like, well, actually that would never be possible because, but it, it does, it doesn't make sense because really the one or zero is just an abstraction that represents on or off or high or low, as it says here. So that is a, that is a, yeah, that's what, that's a correct summary. I, there's nothing at all wrong about that there. Um, press and hold X to see the whole character table. Okay. Uh, yep. So this is an ASCII translation table where you can see the hex value, the decimal value, the binary value, and then in the C column there is the ASCII character that is being represented. You'll note that, uh, all of the English <clears throat> capital and lowercase letters are represented and they are represented different. The lowercase a is a different character than the uppercase a. Um, and if you get really good at reading binary or even hex or desk, you get look good at looking at ASCII in a way other than its ASCII representation. Uh, you can actually spot them by sight. Uh, a lot of times, for example, whenever we're like, uh, uh, you know, testing an application or something like that, we might throw garbage data at it, like all A's. And then we know that when we, when we look through, um, the, uh, the, uh, output for that, um, let's say that we're, we're pulling data out of different registers to see, you know, where our code ended up. We'll know that, you know, when we see four, one, four, one, four, one, four, one, four, one, that's the data that we threw at it because we threw all A's at it. But you'll also note that the ASCII, uh, character set extends beyond just the English characters. You've got the special characters that are on the keyboard. The numbers are there, of course, but you also have other common language characters as well, because ASCII needs to be essentially, uh, able to represent I mean, the, the character set needs to include um, other languages than English. So we've got the umlaut, the umlauts and such. We also have some other characters, though, as well, like the uh, uh, the card pips and the arrows and the walls and, and so on. That's all part of that character set, too. From way back before, there were graphical um operating systems and everything was represented on command line. Um, these characters were, were used extensively to to uh, pretty up user output a bit. So this this is a real ASCII table though. I mean, it totally is, I can see. Yeah, everything is as it should be, so. All right, Azor, exclusive OR. Azor is a logical operation that results in one when two inputs differ and zero when they are equal. Um, this is a concept that students in my classes do need to learn, particularly when we get to things like reverse engineering and so on. So that that is what Azor is. Uh, that is accurate. Let's see their table here. Uh, so a single bit, uh, if it's OO, those two inputs are the same. So the output will be zero. For O1, those outputs, uh, outputs differ. So it will be a one for one O, same deal. And then if it's one one, the outputs are the same. So the result is zero. And yes, you 
you do do this on a on a bite level as well, so you can zor bites. Uh, that's what it's warning us about, or what it warned us about at the beginning. So let's go back here. I'll show you what I mean. It did warn us before that we don't want to zor ourselves out of existence. So um, the value capital A, as I mentioned, is hex for one, but in binary that is o one o o o o o one, which means that since we are in, and I can't point because I don't have a mouse, so if you look to the left here, the orange character, the orange one, represents us in binary. Um, the seventh position in the binary for a capital letter A is also one. And to zor ourselves out of existence would mean that if we cross over that area, um, or essentially whenever we cross over an area, we are zoring. So since those two inputs would be the same in position seven, we would equal zero. And supposedly, or apparently that would mean the end of our existence. But if we go over here to the, uh, the periods here, these characters, you can see if I put them right next to each other that the character in the seventh position in the uh, binary for the period is 00101110. And since that seventh position differs from our current position, which is one, um, it shouldn't kill us. So this is, I guess, the test to see if we get that. Oh, cool. We changed. So we were, we were an ampersand, which is, if we hold X here, uh, the ampersand is right at the top of the third column. So right above the capital A, that's hex 40 des 64. Um, you can see that we are an ampersand in the ASCII table, the ASCII representation of the game world because 01, 00, etc. is the binary for an ampersand. Now, if we jump down to where the period is, uh, we become a lowercase n. And if you look in the fourth column about halfway down, you can see at hex 6e uh, des 110, we become an n because when our bit jumps into that space, it, it changes the character that's being represented because we're essentially putting a 1 in the seventh position uh, and we're no longer representing in binary the ampersand i should say at symbol sorry not ampersand at symbol um and now representing instead the end so that's that's a i mean it makes sense but it, i think it's a cool little touch and then we jump right back of course so that's nice um these guys over here the uh forward slash um oh they're not represented on the table That's interesting. Oh, no. No, they're not. I'm not sure what that means, then. I'm just going to skip them. Must just be, like, shading or something? Is that what it's supposed to be? So if we go this way, uh, we are safe, at least with the equal sign, uh, and we appear to be safe also with the dash. We know we're safe with the dots. Oh, but we're not, because, look, this is a different character. That's, um, what is that? Uh, oh, it's uh, over there, the last column, the far right. Um, X49 or 4A, 249 or 250. That's not a period. That's a different character in the ASCII table. The period is a uh, second column, about halfway down, hex 2E46. So this is a different character. It doesn't look like we can actually go through it because it looks solid but that's that's okay so we're good there we're good to the dash good to this good to this good to that. there we go so we got to be careful because some of those ascii characters do look very similar i mean just looking at this right now i know that the path on the top is probably not going to be safe for us because uh the shading the cell shading uh characters are very high up in the ascii table and so Probably not healthy for us to walk through. Oh, but I can definitely see that uh, we shouldn't walk through this either. So oh, we are good here. It's high up in the table, but you can see it's uh, 101. So we're actually safe if we go through here. We become the more or less sign or the plus minus sign. 
Uh, remember, it's all about the seventh bit. Okay, I will keep that in mind. I will, I promise. What's over here? Looks can be deceiving. Yes, we already figured that out. The period is not was not a period. I think that's what they're referring to. Okay, over here, and here's a dead end we saw before. Uh, from at, uh, bit at bigosaur.com, subject acid table. Please find a randomly shuffled table of all single byte characters on the left side. Please find a randomly shuffled table. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. Um, all right. So we won't be able to get through there. We won't be able to get through there. Um, won't be able to get up through here either, though. Ah, through here we can go. Okay, and now I think the this path should be the one that's clear to us because the numbers are fairly low in the table. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So do we have to? Uh, oh, actually, what's that purple thing? What are you? Achievement unlocked. Eureka. Okay, I guess I'm supposed to collect those. All right, we got to find a path through this random crap. Is that what we're supposed to be doing? Shouldn't be too hard if we look at the binary, because it's helpfully color-coded for us. Looks like we can go through here. Nope, not that one. Through here. Uh, oh, no, we're already stuck. we got to go up, over, down, down. <coughs> nope, that's not the way. The Unity way. And we're gonna have to go down and around, I think. Something tells me this ain't as random as they led me to believe. All right. Explorer. ASCII maze. It was a maze. Definitely was. Uh, URL, form topic, what the hell is hex? Okay. By anonymous hexor. One post plus 42 kudos. Since the binary numbers are hard to read and take a lot of screen space, we use hexadecimal, a base 16 system. It's very convenient because you can store a single byte in exactly two digits. Uh, yes, as I mentioned before, a single byte, those are byte pairs. Uh, if you take a byte, so four bits, I'm sorry, if you take a byte eight bits, cut it in half into four bits, then you can represent a byte uh, with just those byte pairs. So the four characters will represent will be represented by one character, the four will be represented by another. This translates to decimal, which goes from zero to 255. Um, so hexadecimal zero zero to FF. It's, as I already, I already mentioned that. It's good that the game is bringing this up.
gameidea.txt. I think I'll make a textual game where you play as a single bit or byte and will take place inside computer RAM at first and allow the player to visit video RAM or maybe CPU and GPU as well. The game would show 64 kilobytes of memory uh, at a time as well as a big grid of 256 by 256 characters where you can move around the player at location would be shown on top of the screen as hex coordinates and it definitely definitely is all right at the hardware level computer programs just are sets of instructions for the processor to execute these instructions for the cpu are stored in computer memory different commands are stored as different numeric values when you want to execute a, com a program you instruct the cpu to jump to that memory location and start executing this is true i mean this is the way machine code works uh what's the red thing though oh okay i'm seeing on the on the hold on on the right hand side now we have uh those instructions so we have a jump we have a swap uh let's keep reading though my simple cpu will have a limited number of instructions less than 255 so an instruction would fit in a single byte to make it more readable i will use the bytes corresponding to regular letters let's start with two instructions um So byte uh, 106 is J for jump to address. 155 is S for swap data register with value at address. Okay. I can see that's what we you got going on here. So for quick access, processors have a small amount of local storage called registers. When uh, CPU needs to work with data from RAM, it fetches it into a data register. Here's a very simple program that swaps the byte at the memory address E25D with the byte currently in the data register. Hint, you can see the current program executing on the right side of the screen. Yes, we do see that. Do you see how it's the X is disappearing and reappearing? So look at the uh, register zero um right now it's jump so it's executed but if we take a step it's at swap and it's swapping the data in the register so zero and that value goes gets executed with the jump and then back and forth zero to the value for x which we can't walk through the x so so we essentially what we need to do is we need to make sure that uh, we can get through like that um, at a time when the X is not there. So uh, and then off to the left side here, uh, right above my character right now, there's the S and the J instruction that they were just mentioning uh, that uh, is being executed. So that's cool. Arrow key. All right, what's this guy? Oh, now we're adding in something else here. Here's a simple teleport that swaps between locations, between two different locations. So swap, swap, and repeats. So there's that zero value. Nothing happens. There's the value now being dumped into the data register. And there we go. See how it's the X is jumping back and forth? Uh, and now we're in the register. See, that's us in the data register 40. And now we've jumped to that location. Because that location is right there. That's pretty neat. All right, what do we got now? I wasn't paying attention. I didn't see what changed. Uh, all the values. Hint. Addresses use hex notation just like the player coordinates. Hint 2. The program code has changed after teleporting. Yes, I can see that. Um, okay. Uh, we're, we're looking for the right coordinates here. Uh, which is represented on the right. If we can find that location, we should be able to jump. So 
seven, six, five. It's up over here. All right, there. Okay. Now we're in the register and now we hop out. CPU jumped to a new program again. Tread carefully. Hint, CPU executes the next instruction after you move or just try to. All right, so next location here. Uh, can't. Oh, there we go. Let's say it feels like we have to move. Oh, no, we didn't jump to quite the right space there. We jumped to, well, I mean, we jumped to the right, we jumped to the right place, <clears throat> which was, not sure where were we, must have been over here. Five, there we go, five AC. We jump to, no, so okay. I'm trying to figure out how we need to get over there. That looks like it would be, yeah, that looks like it would be two, nine, five, uh, yeah, two, nine, five, nine. So we need to be on this location in order to swap. So, there we go. All right, we got it. All right, we got another swap here. Um, see where we got to end up. I think we need to hop over here into this little location, which looks like it would be. Uh, this must be. O two five a, and then we need to be on. One eight five five eight five. Oh no, that's not going to work. We might have to jump twice. Um, so we need to be on. Uh, let's see, where is nineteen? No, that's not going to work either. So we got to. We actually have to go from OC five seven. Which is over here. We'll see. Oh, we gotta get in the in the ear. Alright, OC57. That gets us to uh uh to here. Then we can jump over here. And then we can jump. Oh shoot. We gotta do this here. There we go. All right, we got her. Teleport. Thank you. Compare. But I don't want my program to always do the same thing. For example, when I press delete, it should delete a character. But if I press X, I want it to show the letter X on screen. Oh, that's easy. Just use the compare instruction to check which key was pressed and the conditional jump to tell the CPU to jump to the desired code to execute. This is, this is excellent. This is an excellent game. It's, it's explaining these concepts really well. Um, okay, compare instruction. Uh, byte 99 ASCII C will be compare, so compare byte. Compares the byte with the data register and sets the value in the compare register. Condition compare register. Uh, so equals greater than, less than. All right, let's hit the code here. Ooh, there we go. There we go. Now, now... Now we're talking with now we're now we're cooking with assembly or something whatever. All right. Um, 
So uh, E is uh, equal to G greater than L less than jumps if so. What it's explaining here is that with the uh, conditional compare, you can see on the right hand side we have JE. Uh, well, that's all we have right now in there, but yeah, um, uh, JE, JG, JL are compare functions that say compares the values, and then uh, if the values meet the condition, then it will execute code at whatever specific address. So, um, with, um, let's see if we can uh, explain. So there we have uh, on the second one. So we, we're at a swap right now. The second one is our compare. Um, so it's going to compare the the value uh, or the the byte, uh, as you can see there in the the page. Oh, no, sorry, our compare is a full byte, so one all ones. Um, it will compare that with the value in the data register, which is about to be hex value a 77 and uh, it will report that condition. And if they are equal, that's the third line we're on right now, it will jump to 8864. Or 8860, that's our jump command. So what we need to do uh, is we need to move forward here. A seven seven, yep, so it'll be over here. A six E seven seven. Okay, but now our instructions are at the, the uh jump equal, so we need to actually oh there we go. I thought we had to go farther around, but we're good. All right, so now it's going to do that comparison. They are equal, and so it should do that jump. There's the gate. And we did a swap, so the G is now there, uh, which now we are on. Uh, we need to get to AE, so it's the character above that, AE67, or 76, sorry. And then we wait for it to come around. It's doing the compare. They're now equal. And now it will, that's the evaluation. And now it will do the jump. Oh, wait, sorry. This is A, 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 A. Down here. There we go. And now it's doing the swap. There we go. And now that we're past that, we're looking for uh, A677. Which is this one? Eight six seven seven. Jump, jump, jump. There we go. Jump, jump. There we go. Now we're looking for <clears throat> B one seven four. B one seven four. And that's our last letter, and now we're good to go. Jump when the value in the data register is less than the byte value in the machine code. Okay, so here's our stop. CF7B. So C F seven B doing that evaluation. Now this should fail because we're equal. No. Okay. Oh, because we're still doing the compare. Uh, so CF77. And C. 
so the other corner, I'm guessing. C97 B. And well, we're back to this corner here. Okay. Uh, dead end hint compare. Oh, I see. I see. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. You gotta get out this way. That code is running and it's just moving all those guys around. <clears throat> Ipso facto posto. Okay. Okay, we got a bunch of swaps here. Compare register keeps its value until the next comparison is made. Okay. Well, we just saw that before when we were doing the stop thing, but okay. Uh, anyway, sorry, I got distracted with something else. All right, so. No, oh, we're already doing it. All we got to do is just move, run into this here, should be. No? All right, let's see what it's doing here. <clears throat> there we go. Slowly moving our way through. That's what I thought we all, all we had to do, but when it, it didn't work out exactly the way I thought, I wasn't sure. Oh, no, well, it's like we did make a mistake. Dang it. It's the opposite of what I wanted to do. too fast here for my own good. <sighs> Did it again. Oh, there we go. Okay. It's actually let's actually look and see what it's doing because I'm just hit buttons. Um okay. Let's actually look at what it's doing here. So we have a swap. Where am I right now? F2, F3. There's F186. That's the first swap. Then F0. Okay, that's how we're moving through the letters there. It's swapping those out. Okay, but hold on a sec. Swap. Compare D60. Okay. All right, that's how it's okay, that's how it's jumping me through there. I'm at EF okay, so here's EF86. That's my current position. It's gonna swap me over to EE. -E. Okay, that's how we're moving through this. Okay. 
And then I need to wait for it to come around here. To EE86, that's going to swap me over to EC86, so the next one in the line. Same, then it moves me over 1 to EB. I'm sorry, EC. Then I'll be on EB. Okay, then I'll be on EA. Okay, then I'll be on E9, E8, and so on. E7. We don't get to E6, though, but we do get C. So there's me on E7. Okay, compare. Swap with, okay, back to F186. Okay, gotcha. So that means that if I start there, okay, and then I do, no, I didn't want to do that. I want to be compare okay, F one eight six. There we go. Well, that was kind of a puzzle. That was a puzzler for sure. Okay. The labyrinth. The labyrinth. Okay, well, we need to get out there. And this way, around there. There, so up here. I don't, I'm not sure if we can cross over the underscore, but. Um, we cannot. Okay, so we need to find another way around here. Um,. Up around that's a dead end, that's a dead end. So up all the way. There's another underscore there, so that's not gonna work. Unless it's not the same character. I think it is though. Let's check it. I just realized that you can't hear all the uh, beautiful sound effects. My apologies. All right, so is that the same underscore character? It is. Okay, so we can't get through that. All right, so if we trace it back here from the wind down through here, then up this way, up here, around, uh, there's our underscore. I'm not sure how to get on the other side of it. So one of these walls, not really a wall. Oh, we probably need to... I just realized we probably need to teleport, don't we? Okay, so C589 is going to be C5... It's uh, going to be up there. 
above us. So that won't work, but D3... D three eight D is uh, that space above us. So and there we go. Okay, and that means that now we can get to. Uh, actually, we can just get out. Okay. Hack. You can change any bite you can walk into. Okay. All right, then. Um, okay, so... Six. E... Six E. I just noticed that it changed, but I'm not sure. Oh, it, it worked. The X moved. Hmm. Okay. Maybe maybe on this next one I can figure out what, what I, I did exactly here. Okay, so I'm comparing two, one. X two one is uh, uh, exclamation points. <clears throat> and I'm at four nine eight six. So the one beneath me here is four nine eight seven. I can see four nine eight seven. There's the swap for it right there. And that's going to be in, okay. Four a eight six. Um. Or six eight two no four nine eight 
Right next to me is four nine, or right next to me is four eight four seven four six. So J. Um. J is x six A, and that's a jump equal. Okay, so I need to find it. I need to change that value. Um, I can't. But maybe I can change that to one thing a bit more friendly. It's something of a. Uh, oh, oh, there's a the period. How does that work? I'm not sure how I got that value to change to begin with. Especially since I don't remember there being any I don't know. Four two so what's four two six F? What's that? What is that? I pressed a button and a thing happened. Uh, what is that? Or A86, yeah, this should be where the X jumps to. Um, you can change any bite you can walk into. That's our hint. What is that? Oh. Oh. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. There's the exclamation point. That's what I needed to do. There's my jump equals. Okay. Oh, got stuck on a press and hold the hint. Oh, that's what it's a hint button. Oh, um, well, that doesn't really help me that much. <laughs> that didn't actually help me that much, sadly. Um, okay. I don't know why the S's are being highlighted. I'm not getting that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, let's see. Our compare is with 2E. Um, period. Okay. Oh, and there's one right here. Okay. 
can't wait. Okay, there we go. Now it's six E N. Okay, now we gotta swap and a jump. Why does it keep doing that? It's not it's not the game, it's something with something with me. Um Okay, but how do we make use of this? Jump to 147E. I'm right now at 143. Sorry, 417E, 437F. So 417E would be uh, the S. Oh, that's probably why they're highlighted. Okay. Now it's four one eight two. Now it's comparing three nine number nine. Playing it. Oh, it's adding one every time. I got you. I now have an add one. Inside. Wonderful. All right. Well, I am. Uh, I'm about at my limit uh, for for this one for today. I I may come back and do a part two. Let me know if you want to see more. Uh, but from what I've seen over the last hour of gameplay, this is uh, all I hoped it would be. Um, this is a lot of fun. Um, it explains complicated. Um, so I teach at the university level, of course. Um, but even <clears throat> for students in my more advanced classes, um, their exposure um to the processes of reverse engineering and assembly instructions um and and even with um data encoding um it's a difficult concept right and it's not one that we really teach um very much at least in my area but i i, I suspect in the united states in general so it is a tough topic to wrap your head around so a game like this i think is a, excellent way to to do that and i'm very happy uh with my discovery here of rogue bit um this this definitely is uh is rivals squally in its ability to to explain these concepts and gamify this and i'm really pleased to have found it um i am putting this on my list this was great uh, i i think i might I might come back for a part two, regardless of whether or not anyone else wants to see it. But I am I am getting a lot busier now that the summer's over with, so I guess we'll see what I have time for. But um, this is an excellent game. Uh, everything I saw in there, I have I have uh, all of the concepts were correct. Uh, the explanations were simple and easy. Um, the puzzles um, are are great. I mean, there was a couple of them here at the end where even I scratched my head a little bit. I did feel towards the end here with these last couple of puzzles that the game had crossed over a bit from uh, teaching these concepts and explaining what I needed to do or how to figure them out um, to just kind of leaving me to my own devices and, and saying, well, here you go. Uh, because, you know, it's throwing ads at me and it didn't explain what an ad is or does. Um, and it didn't explain the whole when it just said hack and then it said you can change any bite you can walk into that didn't really track with me i didn't really understand exactly i mean i i can see that we're changing these bites but i 
didn't really get how that's translating exactly to to changing the code but that may just be me i might just be a little bit slow or i'm you know i may just need to put in a little more time in order to to puzzle it out i'm sure that we'll be able to figure it out so but uh, again rogue bit uh, this has been excellent um so i do recommend do recommend for for learners of assembly I, I might need to start keeping more than one list i have one list of five cybersecurity slash hacking themed games um that i recommend and i keep it to five so if another one comes along another game drops off the list but that list at this point if i add roguebit to it is going to be like one hacking simulator and the rest of them will be other games <laughs> that aren't aren't hacking games um so i might need to keep a good list of hacking puzzle games or a good list of just uh, assembly games or something and hacking games and then cybersecurity games i don't know I don't have that much room in the about me section of, uh, of the YouTube channel page. So, um, but excellent. Excellent. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you on the next one.